Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be starting our brand new survival series. And to begin, I've already, you know, I've pre-made some things here. Not important at the moment, but we basically got a blank scene here and we'll, we'll be going through everything together anyways. So to start off, I think we'll be just setting up our character. Nice simple stuff for the first episode. So right off the bat, just with my camera and my light, I'm going to create a new empty. I'm going to call this game load and I'm going to put everything into the game load. So I'm going to make sure everything's centered out to start here. And then we're going to drag and drop these inside. And because I like to stay organized, I'm going to create a whole bunch of these things to divide my stuff. Alright. And there we go. So, to begin, we will be making our character. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, and let's just put them on some kind of ground here. I'm gonna make a plane. Okay. So this is where we are at, and this is how we're gonna get started. First, I'm gonna be figuring out what kind of controls I want this to be. For myself, I'm thinking of a top-down point and click to move for my survival game you know it's all up to you guys what you want it all works the same either way and let's just make this a little easier on the eyes here yeah, that looks good okay and before I even like <clears throat> start going crazy into my character and stuff like that I think right off the bat I'm gonna drop in a 3d model because a lot of the times if I go start working on them while they're in this not everything will stay the same after I drop my character model in so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right off the start and for mine I'm gonna be using so this is gonna be a Cinti style game obviously it's what I use the most I've got a lot of stuff I already installed ready to go in this but I'm gonna be using the fantasy heroes characters just because they're completely customizable 100% through and through so that is what I'll be using it will all work the same either way depending on what you use so I'm gonna go ahead and go under my animation and drop one of the presets in and then I'm gonna completely take all this stuff off and start fresh with my character because as a survival game you don't want to start off with the best equipment so I'm gonna make it so I have almost absolutely nothing to start with. There we go. That is my character. Well, not actually, but... So I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. I'm going to find where all the parts are. All right. And I do have a female voice pack that's actually really good, so I'm going to go ahead and make mine the female character. And let's see, what else am I looking for here? Start with the torso, and then the arms, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I have everything. Oh, missing a head though. Okay, and some eyebrows. I don't know why those aren't popping up. Oh, missing mesh, that's why. There we go. And let's get some hair as well. <clears throat> This might take a second here for me to find one. Alright, 
I'll go with that one. Alright, so that is our character set up, ready to go. And let's set our cameras and our controls to the character. So I'm going to go ahead and create another empty here. I'm going to call it cameras because I'm going to be having multiple camera angles, whether it's for player movement or, say, looting or opening our inventory or something. It's all going to have different cameras. So we're going to create under the cameras, game creator camera, camera shot, and like I said earlier, mine's a top down, so I'm going to head and rename this one the camera shot main, turn it as my main shot, make it a follow target of the player. I'm going to probably, no, I probably won't need an offset. So I'm going to go ahead and see where that angle's sitting at right now. Okay, so let's just adjust this a bit to my liking. No, so that's way too zoomed in. Let's go six by five, maybe. That seems better. Okay. Six by five, and adjust my main camera as well so it lines up with that. There we go. And for my player controls, let's see. I think I'm doing point and click style controls, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my inputs here. I'm gonna click on this thing on the side and go point and click, and I'm gonna go right, right click to move. And yeah, that, that's how I'm going to be getting around in mine, so I'll go ahead and show you guys that with the camera angles here. Very Diablo style here. Yeah, just like that. Alright. So our player is set up, our camera is set up. I'm not sure what else I want to showcase in this episode, I just wanted to get a simple little, you know, ready to go, ready to start after this anywhere we wanted to. So yeah, I'm going to save that there, and we'll figure out what to add in a second here. So, I've already pre-made um, some stats for my character. I haven't assigned them or anything yet, but I wanted to show you guys first. So, right down here, I'm under my... So I made a project folder and an imports folder to help categorize everything I've installed and everything I've made myself. So in my stats... I have two folders for my player and AI. My AI is simple, I just have an AI class with some health and one called random to help randomize stuff. <laughs> um, for my character though, there's a lot more to it. So I've got all sorts of stuff here. So I got my player class, which only has my four attributes that I've put on so far is my health, my stamina, my hunger, my thirst, your basic survival traits of the game I've got a whole bunch more stuff here but I haven't added them in yet we'll get into that later but so to start off we're gonna add these to your character and if you don't know how to do that I recommend you know going back watching some older videos and how to get classes traits attributes stuff like that and then once you got that set up you meet me back here and we will add these to our character so we're gonna go under our player I'm gonna add traits, and I'm gonna add the uh, player class. All right, so that's all there. I'm also going to add a remember. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here. And I'm gonna add stats, attributes, and that's it for that. Our player is set up, ready to be saved, and save stats. And I'm thinking, because I'm designing for PC this time around, that I'm going to set a few um, inputs right off the bat here. Um, first of all, I'm just going to create another folder here to help categorize things. So I'm going to call this one world. I'm just going to drop the light and the plane within the world. Alright. And then for our player... I'm going to create another empty here, 
I'm going to do it under the player and I'm going to call it player settings this I'm going to also add a marker to player settings because you never know if you'll need it or not and then I'm going to go ahead and drop the player under the player settings all right now that being done I have create another empty and this is going to be called game settings okay and under game settings I'm going to create another empty called input controls I guess create another empty called um, main menu toggle toggle main menu all right and for toggle main menu so before we even set that we're gonna have to create somewhat of a menu here so I already have some UI packs installed so I'm gonna go ahead and create um, an empty or not an empty a canvas a UI canvas all right and that comes with the event system which I am going to replace with the new input system I'm going to slide that all the way up to the top here just so I can ignore it and for my canvas I'm going to slide that somewhere close to the top as well all right so canvas right off the bat figure out what size you're making your game for and then not constant pixel size but scale with screen size 1920 1080 done I'm gonna rename my canvas to the game HUD I'm gonna create a panel under the canvas okay and this will be or sorry this will be game HUD I'm gonna call this one I don't even know game UI I guess and this will be the HUD or player player HUD okay I'm gonna go ahead into scene view so right off the bat this is gonna be set on stretch is what what we want and we're going to turn this way down okay and then under player HUD I'm going to create an empty call this main menu UI and that is also going to be set to stretch and if you go into your transform by pressing T we're going to drag that out to the same size as the panel and let's see we are going to add a UI image under that called main menu and we want our main menu I guess right in the center here so we're gonna keep that centered I'm gonna scale it up a little bit so something like that for my main menu when you open it I'm gonna go ahead and find a picture for that so I'll be right back with that okay so this is going to be the background for my main menu we're gonna make it a little bigger here all right and in that <clears throat> I'm gonna create a few buttons and the reason why because the next episode we're probably gonna get in right away with like saving and loading and stuff like that just so so I want to set the groundwork to that so I'm gonna go to game creator UI buttons and this one's going to be called our this will be our s resume button okay and I'm doing that because when you open the main menu it is going to pause your game so there we go I think that's a good size there and I'm gonna go ahead and find a picture for that so I'll be right back with that as well okay so that's the button I'll be using for that I'm gonna go ahead and change this text to a white color so we can see it 
and I am going to write resume on it. Make it nice and big. I got another font to use as well, so. There we go, that is our resume button. I'm not gonna put any functionality to that yet, we're just setting up the groundwork again. So under resume, I'm gonna duplicate this button. And this is going to be our, well for now we'll just go button save. save game make that a little smaller okay and this one here will be I'm gonna do so I'm gonna make a cheat menu as well just for testing purposes so this will be button cheat cheat menu And this one here, I guess for now, we'll do an options menu, button options. And then for the last one, this will be exit game. Exit to menu or main menu. No, I like exit to menu. All right, so we've set up the groundwork to our main menu here. And, you know, I'm just going to make it a little better looking here, a little more even. Okay, so that's our main menu, or not our main menu, sorry, our pause menu. So I went, I actually go ahead and rename that here just so I don't get confused. Pause menu, and then pause menu UI. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the menu itself, not the UI. All right, and under game settings, and then toggle pause menu input. Toggle pause menu. We are going to add a trigger on input, on input button. I'm gonna change my button to keyboard, keyboard press. And then this is gonna be escape, wherever escape is. There it is. So on keyboard press escape, we will be running a condition. Condition being, well let's add a condition here. And then slide that condition up there. So that condition is going to be if game object is active. And that game object being our pause menu. So we're going to start off if it's not active. So we're going to turn that off. So if the pause menu is not active, then we will set active the pause menu to true duplicate that branch if the pause menu is active then we will set pause menu to false all right let's give that a shot okay so hit escape there's my menu no functionality Notice how I can still walk in the background though. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. So pause menu, we are going to add a trigger on enable. We are going to set the time scale. So time scale, we're gonna set time scale to zero. And then we're gonna copy and paste that trigger. 
and this is going to be on disable we will set our time scale back to one done go ahead and try that one more time so I can't move in the background here and then I close it I do start moving though wherever I clicked in the uh, when it was paused so if I were to click over here to move and then undo it I am moving over there so let's see if we can fix that real fast I don't know if that's an option within the player movement or not um, I have an idea no we'll go back to our pause menu so on disable we will stop moving maybe that will work stop movement to player as well as I'm gonna add that up top as well just in case and I'm gonna make that the first one so let's go ahead and test that let's move and then pause and then resume so you stop moving and I'm gonna go ahead and pause I'm gonna click move over here and then resume alright so that fixed that so that's a pretty good start for the first episode here got our players set up and we've set the foundations for our menus I'm gonna go ahead and save there and end the video and for the next video I'll probably be getting into the main menu um, integrating that in with our pause menu being able to save and go back or start a new game etc stuff like that so it's all very simple stuff you don't have to follow me on that one if you already know how to do that and you want to do that later you go for it but that's going to be our episode two all right i will see you guys in the next one good luck and see you soon